guys, so 4.1, extreme values of functions. Um, so there is a new theorem. I know you guys had IVT, so we have extreme value theorem. And it's basically just saying if f is continuous and on a closed interval, so basically it can't just go on forever, okay? So if it's on a closed interval and it's continuous, then there has to be at least one absolute max and one absolute minimum value on that interval. So I'm gonna show you this picture over here, just so you can see kind of what we're talking about. And you can fill it in right now if you want. Um, so classifying these extreme values, and then we'll go back up and look. So our absolute minimum value of the function f, since it's only from here to here on the x-axis, would be at point A. And then our absolute maximum value would be here at point B. So A, we say, is an absolute minimum. B is an absolute and a local maximum. So the difference between absolute and local, there's only one absolute, unless like B and F are in exactly the same place for Y values, then they would be both absolute maximums. But there's usually only one absolute maximum. But local maxes and local mins can happen many times. So to be a local max or a local min, you're basically at the top of a roller coaster or you're at the bottom of a roller coaster. So if you go up and then down, if your slope is positive and then negative, then you have a local max. So there's a local max at B, there's a local max at D. And then there's a local min at C, there's a local min at E. F is not a local max because it doesn't go up and then down. And it's also not an absolute max because it's not higher than point B. So these are everything that we can specify for these points, A through F. And then it says, what's the absolute maximum value? So the absolute, absolute maximum value is actually a Y value. And it would be the Y value at point B, which is seven. So you don't really say Y equals seven because Y equals seven is technically a line. You know what I mean? Um, and then the absolute minimum value would be at point A, and then the minimum value would be zero, because that Y coordinate would be zero. So if they asked, what's the absolute minimum value, you would say zero. If they asked, at what X value do you have an absolute minimum, you would say at X equals, you know, two or whatever it is. So a little bit, you know, different questions. Okay. And then over here, it's kind of defined. So an absolute maximum would be the highest y value in a given interval. And then absolute minimum is the lowest y value in the given interval. So I just did dot, dot, dot. Um, absolute and global would mean the same thing. And then a local max versus a local min, like I said, a local max is when f prime, so the slope changes from positive to negative. So F would be increasing and then F would be decreasing. So this can be a corner or it can be like nice and smooth. It just has to increase and then decrease. And then same for local min, uh, F would decrease and then increase. So F prime, which is the slope, the slope would be negative and then it would be positive. So these are called local maxes and mins. They're also called relative maxes and mins. Um, and all of these are extrema. So these are absolute extrema and these are local extrema or relative extrema, okay? So here's everything that's getting highlighted for that first section. So those are pretty important terms. And then on the right side, we have critical points and inflection points. So inflection points are actually also critical points. Critical points are anywhere where f prime equals zero or f prime is undefined. Um, the same thing, with inflection points. So if inflection points, um, F double prime is zero or undefined, you have also a critical point. So these are all called critical points. Um, anywhere where something weird happens is basically a critical point. And then I wrote right here for inflection points, that's when your second derivative, so think of acceleration, that's when your second derivative changes from positive to negative or vice versa. So I wrote VD, but that's like or from negative to positive, okay? So again, critical points is when your first derivative or your second derivative equals zero or equals undefined. So if f prime is greater than zero, 
that means that f of x has to have a positive slope there. So f of x would be increasing if you have a positive slope, your line or your curve would be increasing. And then if your slope is negative, if f prime is less than zero, that means your slope is negative, then f would be decreasing. You have a relative max when f prime changes from positive to negative because your slope is changing from positive to negative. You would go from going up to going down. Relative min, the opposite, right? So you would be your f would be decreasing and then increasing. So your f prime, your slope, would be negative and then positive. Um, if you have something that doesn't change, so even if you have f prime equals zero or undefined, and then it just stays positive, it goes from positive to positive or negative to negative, it's still called a critical point, okay? So here's a little example. So here's an f prime graph. So let's say at negative 3 and 0 and 1, we have some, some zeros. So like, let's say you solve for the function, and then you, um, well, let's say you get the derivative, and then you solve it, and then you get, you know, x equals negative 3 and 0 and 1. And then you test some points. So you test the left side of negative 3, kind of like the number lines for the velocity or acceleration. So let's say this is velocity, you solved, and you got three places where t equals these numbers, and then you know that this is positive and negative and positive and positive. So what this could look like for the original function, I like to go like this. So I just literally follow my slopes, because f prime is slope. So my slope is positive, negative, positive, positive. That means I'm increasing for f everywhere there's a positive. So I'm increasing, decreasing, increasing, increasing. So literally, I just go increase, decrease, increase, increase. But I know there's zero slopes at these like weird points. So zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, and then it continues. So here there's a zero slope. That makes sense. Here there's a zero slope. That makes sense. Here there's a zero slope. It's supposed to be increasing and increasing. It would make sense if it increased like this and then it flattened out a little bit and then it increased some more. But I can get the basic shape of it from my f prime. And I always start my basic shape from f prime. So this says positive, negative, positive, positive. My slope is positive, negative, positive, positive. Okay, going on to inflection points, this helps us figure out the rest of what the graph looks like. So inflection points tell us about concavity. So if f double prime is positive, then f, your original function, is concave up. If f double prime is less than zero, if the second derivative is negative, then that means that f is concave down. So concave up literally is like, like a bowl, right? So like some part of a bowl. Concave down would be an upside down bowl, right? So inflection points are when f double prime changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. If it stays the same, it's not an inflection point, it's a critical point. So something like this how this was graphed. So I would first, you, well, actually, just kidding. So this doesn't have an f prime. So if it had an f prime, then I would use that f prime and I would go, you know, up, down, up, up, or whatever it was. This only tells me about concavity. So this one I'm just kind of guessing, okay? So I'm concave up, concave down, concave down, and concave up. So this is one graph that could work for my general f. So concave up, concave down, and then there's no, there's no second derivative. It says, it doesn't say zero. It says there's no second derivative. So I made a hole here. And then concave down and then concave up. So I went concave up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. This has a second derivative of zero. So it's changing from concave up to concave down. This one also changes from concave down to concave up. But this one doesn't have a second derivative, so there's like a hole, or there's a vertical asymptote, or some, something weird is happening there. Okay, I don't know exactly what, but something weird. All right. So over here, I labeled all of my critical and inflection points. So this is based on what it looks like. So it looks like you have something that goes like this, and it goes down really smoothly, and then it goes from concave up, you can see right here, to concave down. 
and then back to concave up like that. So I labeled all of my F primes and my F double primes. I think you should label, pause the video, label it, and then go back and look and see if you have any questions about it. But basically F prime is just, it's going down. F prime, zero slope. F prime, positive slope. F prime, zero slope, like that, right? So check that, ask each other, um, make sure that your pluses and minuses and zeros are correct. And then your critical points. So I listed my critical points. My critical points are going to be when F prime or F double prime is zero or undefined. So it's going to be right here and right here, right here, right here, right here. So everything except for A and G because those F primes are not zero or undefined. And then I listed, okay, this looks like a local min. This also looks like, I would say, I'm gonna put a little slash here. This also looks like an absolute minimum. Because you can see on the left, it goes up all the way. On the right, it goes up all the way. This is actually our lowest point. And then C right here, that's an inflection point. D is a local max. It's not a absolute because there's arrows here. E is an inflection point. And then F is a local min. So it's not an absolute because B is lower than F. So I would just call that a local min. My inflection points are just at C and E. That's when the concavity changes. So just those two places. All right, on the second page. So find all the critical points, inflection points, intervals of increasing and decreasing, and intervals of concavity for this. So you're going to do two problems like this for homework today. So what you're always going to do first is, just like before when you found the velocity and the acceleration, you're going to do the same thing. This is the same thing. Doesn't it look the same? So first derivative, solve for zero. Second derivative, solve for zero. And then using that first derivative, you make a little f prime chart. This is like your velocity chart from before. Second derivative, you make a little f double prime chart. Make sure that it lines up one on top of the, on the other. And then how did I know where the pluses and minuses go? I literally can plug in if I want to. Um, so if I plug in, and I'll just show you two ways, okay? So if I plug in, then I, I have these points and I list those points and then I plug in, let's say like a negative 10. So I plug in a negative 10, negative 10, I get a negative, negative 10, I get a positive, negative 10 is a positive is negative, so that's negative. I'm just do one more. So let's say I plug in negative 0.5, negative, multiply, I get a negative. Negative 0.5, if I multiply, I get a negative. I don't know what it is, but negative 0.5 times negative 0.5 is like negative 2.5. Or 0.25, and then I subtract one, I get a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, the one that I like that I use, because I'm not a sucker and I don't like to waste my time too much, is I look at this and I go, okay, if it's an x cubed with a positive in front, what does it look like? It looks like this. So it goes like that, and then so it's negative, positive, negative, positive. It should look like an x cubed, right? So that's how I do my negatives and positives. This is some sort of parabola with a positive value in the beginning. So it's some sort of parabola that goes like that. If I pass through two points, it's a parabola that goes like that. It's negative in the middle. It's positive on left and right. So I can plug it if I want, or I can just think about what does this look like, and then I get my pluses and minuses, okay? Um, I don't know what 1 over root 3 is, but I do know that it's less than 1. So 1 over root 3 is going to be 1 over 1 point something, so it's going to be less than 1. So it's about here. I don't know exactly what number it is, but it's okay. I line them up, and then here's my f of x. It doesn't ask you to do this, but you guys should really, really, really do this, okay? So this is how I would do it. I would start with my f prime. I go down, up, down, up, because f prime gives me direction. So down, up, down, up. My f prime looks something like this, but it's not pretty yet, okay? So I want to keep this point, I want to keep this point, I want to keep this point. Now I'm going to deal with my concavity. Over here, I have some sort of inflection point. 
that's going from positive uh, F double prime, so that's concave up, ooh, it's rounding out, to concave down. See how this is all lined up? This is how I like to do it. Concave down, and then concave up for the rest of the way, which makes sense. It looks something like that. So then now I have nice and smoothed out. That's F, like that. Okay. Um, so then I list everything. So where are your critical points? Your critical points are um, negative one comma something, zero comma something, one comma something. Plug it back into here to get the somethings, okay, to get the y values. Um, your inflection points is this comma and this comma. Plug it in. I'll show you the answers in a sec. You're increasing from negative one to zero and from one to infinity. You're decreasing from negative infinity to negative one and from zero to one. You're concave up here and here. You're concave down here. So the final answers look like that. And then here is the last one. So example four, find all absolute and local min and max values. Okay, so this one for some reason trips people up. Like this one, people are getting used to because they're like, oh, this is just like velocity and acceleration. This one is actually easier, but for whatever reason, it, it gets a little bit confusing for us, okay? So find um, absolute local max mins. Okay, here's a function. These are really important. These are your endpoints and you have to check endpoints. So that's the hardest part for everybody. You have to check your endpoints. So you're gonna start the same way with your critical values. You're gonna find where f prime equals zero. So you get x equals two and negative one. Okay, this is like when your velocity equals zero. So you have that. And then you're gonna check your endpoints. You're not going you know, from negative to positive infinity like that. You're going from negative 2 to positive 3. So your graph only goes from negative 2 to positive 3. And then you have this negative 1, and then you have this positive 2. Okay? How do you know what the pluses and minus do? Same as before. This is an x squared. This is a positive number. So the parabola looks something like that. So it looks something like that. It goes through negative 1 and 2. This is positive. This is negative. This is positive. Right? It looks something like that. Okay. So... I'm going to check my endpoints, and then my endpoints right here, I'm going to fill in, is negative 2 comma negative 4, and then over here, oops, is 3 comma negative 9. Can you see that? Yeah, barely. Okay. So I have these four points. How did I get the 7 and the negative 20? I plugged the negative one to the original. Okay, so then I have that. And then, again, I use my f prime to help me graph. So my f prime is positive, negative, positive. We're going up and then back down and then back up. What does this look like for 2x cubed, da 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 da, da? It's going to be nice and smooth. So it's going to look something like this. There's some sort of inflection here. I don't know where because I didn't find my second derivative. It looks something like that. I don't know. Oh, I do know. This is negative 2 comma negative 4. And then right here, this was right here negative 1 comma 7. And this was 2 comma negative 20. And this is 3 comma negative 9. So I have some graph that looks like that. What is your local min, your local min, your local max, what is your absolute min and max? Is this lower than this? No, this is a local min and, a lo and an absolute min. And then is this higher than this? Yes, it is. So this is a local and an absolute. And then those are the final answers. So it looks something like that. Okay. Your homework is 4.1. I'll assign this one on Thursday. We're going to work on this on Thursday in class, but your homework is this one. So go ahead and jot it down. This is from your book, 
and then you're doing 1 through 15 odd, and then you're doing these two problems just like example three. Example three is this one, okay? So this is your homework 4.1. All right, good luck. Be really good. I'll see you later.